Here you have a rod at a very weird angle, fixed at one end. The rod is in equilibrium and this is a very important clue. Resting on support Z and vertical wall, the support exerts a force on the, on the rod as shown. Okay, so the diagram shows the direction but not the magnitudes of the forces. So not the magnitudes means it's not to scale. So don't try to redraw the arrows into some kind of triangle because it's not to scale. So we don't know how long these arrows are. We are looking for the direction of the force on the rod at x. So we're looking on the rod, forces on the rod at point x. So point x is right here. So how do we start? How do we know where the force will point? We will need to zoom in on this diagram and take a careful look at what are the forces at play here. Now the first thing we need to know is equilibrium. What is equilibrium? How, how do we think of it? So equilibrium has two parts to it. When you say the rod is in equilibrium, it means that the net force of the rod horizontally, vertically is zero. What does that mean? That means uh, yeah, up, down, left, right should be zero. So if you take a look at the current situation that we have here, we have two, we have two forces so far. W is purely horizontal. R has components. It has a vertical up and some kind of, I guess, green, horizontal component to the left. Okay, so vertically, I think we are good because one points down and that is kind of balanced out with the thing pointing up. So, so, so vertically, we're good. But horizontally, though, if we leave the rod just at this, it's going to have a net force to the left. Well, left is this way. Okay, left, left force to the left, which is a green color one. So to, to counter that, there must be some kind of horizontal component down here. At least. But what about the vertical component? I don't know. The vertical component could be up, it could be down. I don't know. So at least I know there's a horizontal component there. Okay, just from thinking about the net force. Uh, so from here, actually, you already know that X will be pointing to the right. So you can go here and you look for all the ones that have a component to the right. Oops, that should be green. So to the right. Yep, this one's good. This one's a component to the left and that is wrong. Component to the left. Nope. And component to the right. Oh, not bad. Okay. So we are down to two choices. It just be convenient. If you run out of time, just, you know, eliminate two choices and... A or D. So A or D, hmm, in A, the vertical component is upwards. In D, the vertical component is downwards. So how do you know which one it is? This is when you need to go to the second definition of equilibrium. So we said that the first definition is net force should be zero, right? We need to also think of the second definition and that is the moments about a pivot should be zero. Net moment, clockwise and declockwise, all that together should be zero. So what should we choose as the pivot though? This is a tricky one. Um, I would choose Z as the pivot right here. Because it's just resting there. It's not exactly on the end as a pivot, but more like Z. Because if I choose Z as a pivot, then I can see what is the force at X that contributes to you know the overall moment. And I don't have to worry about the forces that are a uh, forces are. So if I take Z as the pivot, okay, so let me wrap off these things. Okay, if you take a look at this, what, what do we have already? W is going to contribute a clockwise moment. It's going to cause the whole rod to turn like this. Really big arrow. Okay, so that's a clockwise moment thanks to W on the end. And we have R, but it acts on the pivot, so no effect on moment so this one no moment of the force because it's acting on the pivot itself oh that's important so we have this clockwise torque that we need to cancel out because it's at equilibrium so whatever force is at x for example a green force it should have a anti-clockwise moment to cancel that out so you think about it should the force be below the rod or above the rod if you want it to be an anti-clockwise moment, it has to be below the rod, like this. Okay, so that is how you can tell 
oh, it should be below the rod. So A is above the rod, D is below the rod. So the best choice actually you have to choose is D because it has to point down below the rod. Okay, so to break it down again, we have all the components and we have the moments. R has a vertical and a horizontal. Horizontal needs to be cancelled out by this one. But also there is a vertical force acting down this way. A little bit. So your final force here will be pointing this way. Also to help with the moment. Anti-clockwise. Okay, so I'm just right here. Is anti-clockwise, is clockwise. Okay, so that is how you can think of all the forces happening here. Remember two, two ideas of equilibrium, you need to use both in order to be convinced of the right answer. Okay, so that's answer is D. Okay, so that's all for this question. I think any doubts, just comment below. Ask somebody and I will see you in the next video.